Is it only? Uh, just a sec. Hi, we're here with um, Joy. I'm just going to do a few little muscle tests for food intolerances. There might be nothing that shows up, but in case there is, I thought we'd give it a go uh, since this was something that was requested. Okay, sit back. So basically, Joy's just lost seven and a half kilos. You're doing HCG, so done really well. Uh, so what we're going to do is check the points for the immune system first off. Hold up for me and hold. So these are acupuncture points. And if all five of them are locking, which they are, it tells me that the immune system's up and running. So if I ask the body in relation to specific substances, bits of foods, then we can find out whether your body likes them or not. Okay, so... Uh, we need to try citrus again too. Okay, cool. So we've got a few. Now for a start, just for fun, I'll show you gluten. And hold. And hold. Hold. So I thought we'd start with that hold. Because gluten is something that Joy knows she cannot tolerate at all. So... The thing about gluten is there's not only one type of gluten. So when you go get a gluten intolerance test or even if you go get uh, the test done by the doctors, they're basically, checking, they're, they're basically checking for one type of gluten. Whereas there's over 800 types and the best labs in the world can only detect 13 of them for intolerances. So unfortunately at the moment we don't have the technology. But anyway, so I've just picked up the, it doesn't mean her body will ever be okay with gluten because it will constantly destroy the villi in the intestines. Nonetheless, what we've just done is temporarily picked up the body to gluten. Hold. So it means that if she kept eating gluten, not only would she get the usual heartburn and bloating and constipation, all the fun stuff that goes along with eating gluten when you're intolerant, but it would destroy the villi so you'd have to rebuild them again. So, so that just shows you the gluten. I'm going to show you gliadin as well. So in relation to gliadin. And hold, hold. Yeah, so gliadin is another protein in wheat. And when we eat wheat and get tired, if we've got bad bacteria in the gut, and if one of our pathways in the liver don't work, we can actually create these things called gliadin opioids in the bloodstream, which means you get tired after eating bread or tired after eating pasta. So that post-carbohydrate exhaustion that we get can often be because your body's actually created a opioid in the bloodstream. So it's like being on heroin or cocaine on the tired end. I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> Gliadin. And hold, 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 hold. So anyway, we know wheat isn't good, but I just wanted to show you that uh, gluten and gliadin are two things that are a problem, but they can also make you feel tired afterwards, so it doesn't help. So what I want to do is the same thing with casein and lactose from dairy. So firstly, let's check overall in relation to dairy products. And hold, 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 that's good. In relation to casein, and hold, 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 and in relation to lactose, hold, 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 hold. So that's all looking pretty good. So dairy does seem to be okay with you. So then it's going, if we're putting on weight with dairy, then it's going to be the amount because it's high in fats, high in proteins. So generally it tends to balance blood sugar until we have too much. So as soon as we have too much, the liver can't metabolize it properly so the body lays down the excess as fat. So that's actually okay for your body as you suspected. Um, I'll also check in relation to citrus. So what's a, so no citrus sort of works with you or? Oh, on HGC it suggested. Oranges, grapefruit. Grapefruit. Yep. And I thought, well, you get pretty sick of apples and bloody strawberries yeah. in 41 days. So I've been adding some. Okay. So let's food. okay. So let's check overall citrus foods. And lemon. And hold. Yeah, right. 
And do do you have heartburn or anything afterwards? No. I've had remarkably Heart. little reflux since I've been on the 41 days. Cool. So this is showing that citrus creates a bit of a pathology in your gut. So it might actually create like a bit of uh, griping or pain or deterioration of the gut wall or something, but it's not showing an intolerance. For some people who don't cope well with citrus, it can be like having Coca-Cola. Well, I wouldn't think that. No, but it can be the same. It can be the same in the body. So in relation to citrus in general, so I'll just pick up the body in relation to citrus. So we'll check out, uh, so lemon juice, lemons as well, did you say? Yeah. Okay, so lemons. And hold, 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 hold. That's lemons, let's check oranges. Hold, 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 hold. Grapefruit. And hold, 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 okay. Now we were talking about pulses earlier on, so I'll just check pulses. Hold. Yeah, right. So do you get, um, I don't eat them, I don't eat so things like baked beans? You know, things like beans or a oh, pulse? Very often. Oh, I'd be more likely to eat fresh green beans or butter beans. Yeah, okay, and with the butter beans, no problems? Probably only eat them twice a year. Yeah, right, okay. So I wouldn't know because of the dose, cool. Because I probably just didn't think to check. Yeah, so pulses are unlocking. Now that can be because the pulses themselves, there's an intolerance to, but it can also be some of the bits in the pulses. So one of the things that is in a lot of pulses these days is lectins. So let's just check in relation to lectins. And hold. Yeah, okay. Hold. Right. So lectins are a natural pesticides that's in a lot of foods, but so many foods have been genetically modified these days that there's between 10 and 100 times the amount that occurs in the foods naturally. And lectins in huge amounts in the gut destroy the bili in the intestines then you don't release enzymes, then you don't break down your food enough, so then you end up with things like digestion issues like heartburn and constipation and bloating and stuff. Would that include, say, ham and pea soup in winter? Well, when we, one of the things about um, the pulses is that the longer you cook them for, the more broken down they are, so that makes them easier to digest. And also when you're cooking it, making sure you really run it under the water and get all the starch out. You can actually see the starch coming out when you're washing, um, yeah, dried peas and that sort of thing, or lentils or chickpeas. So you sort of want to give them a really good wash first, even soak them overnight and then rinse them out the next How day. That's why you soak them overnight. Yeah, part of it to, is to break down the proteins in there that, go, that are going to mess with your gut. And you're about to start increasing your eggs, so we'll just double check eggs. Most of Joy's eggs are homegrown. Hold up. They still, if I have too many of them, they'll give me indigestion, I think. Yeah, right. Too many give them indigestion. Funnily enough, that's actually showing up okay. So homegrown eggs. So let me check if that's, is it the yolks or the whites, do you know? Okay, so let's check the egg yolks. So overall it was saying it was okay, hold. Hold. So in what form would you have eggs? Fried, boiled or scrambled. Okay, and do you get more heartburn with any of those types? Because you can imagine boiled eggs are quite dry. So, you know, it sort of requires some moisture to help it, you know, firstly get down but then to no, I Don't know. Hmm. Well, anyway, eggs are showing up okay. So it must be something else then, like a lack of hydrochloric acid but in I the stomach that or eggs something. I thought might have been fine unless I went out and you'd only taken eggs with you. 
Yeah, right, okay. Right. So then that's the only thing you're eating. Yeah, because everything right. else has got gluten in them. Okay, yeah, so that sort of makes a bit of sense because uh, you can imagine how hard it is if all you've got in your digestive tract or in your stomach is an egg, you know, rather than a lettuce or some tomato or something. Well, it might be, it's three eggs that might be the problem. Yeah. One egg mightn't be. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember. So it just might be too much for your body to release enough enzymes to help to break it down. So that's sort of how we would go about doing some muscle testing. Uh, so basically each time you're finding an unlock, you're adding a program to the body to help to get the body to start dealing with that food and you want it to actually lock several times in a row, you know, at subsequent appointments in order to say, yep, that food's absolutely fine for you. So once doesn't really mean anything, but this gives us a bit of an idea about where you can move forward with your HCG consolidation, which is great. Thank you.